Do you remember that time period in the 1980s, even in the early 1990s, where we just got weirdo toy lines that didn't necessarily have to be associated with a cartoon or a movie? Those were some of my favorite toys as a kid. And sure, I love the franchise stuff, obviously, but man, some of those weirdo toys, the things that the toy companies were experimenting with at the time, have remained some of my favorites even today as a toy collector. And that is exactly what today's toy line is paying homage to and absolutely reminds me of. We're gonna be checking out Nine to Five Warriors. This is a line I've been really excited about for quite some time. You might have even already seen the interview I did with this toy line's creator, Brandon, here on the channel. Well, thanks to the folks over at 9to5Warriors, I do have an early set that we're gonna be taking a look at here today. And we're gonna start, first of all, with this absolutely gorgeous packaging, which I gotta say, totally blister carded, very nice sturdy card backs with some gorgeous artwork on there, uh, which is gonna make these hard to open up. I think these are gonna display really well uh, if you wanna like display them in the packaging, but beautiful packaging, which you can see every single card back also features this incredible artwork by Turbo Pork. You might recognize Turbo Pork's artwork. He's done stuff for Super 7, uh, but these are some gorgeous, bits of artwork on the packaging, which again, really gives them that classic feel that I love. So this first set of figures gives us four characters. Uh, we've got Colonel Custard from the Break Room Bandits. And if we rotate around to the back side of the packaging, we also get a little file card for the character. We get a little comic strip with the origin story, which if you're not familiar, it's just a goofy story that sees office supplies versus discarded food from the trash can, all set in an office space, which is why we have nine to five warriors is the name. I love that the component that brings them to life is a energy drink. <laughs> It's sort of the mutagen in this particular story. And yes, we've got heavy Food Fighters vibes with this toy line. One of my favorite 80s toy lines, so I love to see it. You can see we've got lots of characters there. Hopefully the rest of these are gonna come out at some point, but this first wave just gives us four characters. So Colonel Custard is the leader of the evil break room bandits. We've also got probably one of my favorite designs, uh, Commodore Crisps, also from the Break Room Bandits. And then on the heroic side, on the Water Cooler Commandos, we've got Major Eraser, and we've got Tech Sergeant Scotchy, who is, um, well, he's Scotch Tape. <laughs> He's a tape dispenser. Uh, Major Eraser, of course, being a big pink eraser. Um, seriously, these are incredibly fun looking toys. Packaging is amazing. I'm really impressed with how good the packaging is on these. But as we always do, we got to rip those boxes open. We got to take a closer look at the figures inside. So let's dive right in. Let's do that right now. All right, let's go ahead and start off by taking a look at Colonel Custard here, uh, because I feel like this is the one that most resembles the Food Fighters, which is the toy line that I feel like this is most paying homage to. So if I bring in the tape measure here, you can see that he is about, well, he's, he's about three and a half inches tall if we go to the top of his cape there. Um, so this cape is just removable. You can actually pull it right off of his shoulders, which gives us a naked Colonel Custard, bare bones here. Um, and he is our donut character, our discarded donut character, which is why he's a bad guy. <laughs> he got one bite taken out of him before he was thrown in the trash. Um, but let's just do this right off the bat. So let's go ahead and bring in a Food Fighters action figure and stand them side by side so that you can see that they are basically in the same scale. These look fantastic together. We got Major Munch over here from Mattel's Food Fighters line right there with Colonel Custard. And they definitely have design differences. Like uh, the 9 to 5 Warriors certainly have their own style going on here, which is important, but you can certainly see the homage as well. I mean, look at the green uh, military pants and the black army boots. I mean, it's definitely an homage right to one of my favorite toy lines of all time. I love to see it. Now, the 
Food Fighters figures, as you guys might know, but maybe not, they're made of this very soft kind of vinyl material. Uh, I always joke that they actually kind of feel like dog toys because that's definitely how they feel. 9 to 5 Warriors does not continue that. This is a solid hunk of plastic right here. So it is very hefty, feels very sturdy, and very well made, I will add. And the articulation on this guy is as follows. His arms are just going to move up and down, and his legs are going to move up and down. And that's really all you're going to get out of this guy, just like Vintage Food Fighters. But what more do you need than that? <laughs> so that cape, as I showed you, uh, this is also a pretty solid plastic. It is a little more pliable. You can see it's got a bit more of a bend to it. But it doesn't clip on or anything like that. It just kind of sits on the figure. It sits on his shoulders to kind of complete. Uh, his look and he comes with one accessory in the form of a shield that has been made out of a plastic coffee cup lid how amazing is that exactly the type of coffee cup lid you might see on a styrofoam cup in an office environment it even has the caution attention hot text fasten tag here i mean i love that but this is a hard piece of plastic as well so it's not an actual <laughs> plastic coffee cup lid and you can see there's a handle on his back so that he can hold the shield in his hand and this completes our kernel custard look Great paint deco on this guy. He's bright and colorful. I love the sprinkles. They are very brightly covered, uh, colored there. But I also love just like how angry he looks. I mean, look at these kind of like gray, angry eyebrows, the gray bags under his eyes. And another thing that's really cool about Colonel Custard is he is a figure that features some glow in the dark functionality. The green filling there, like the mutated filling on the inside, as well as his eyes, both glow green when you put them in the dark. Pretty cool stuff. I'm already loving this. We're off to a great start here. All right, so that's gonna bring us over to Major Eraser. This is the leader of our heroic team, and this gets us away from the food motif and into the office supplies motif, as Major Eraser is, well, exactly as his name states, He's one of those big pink erasers. Uh, looks like he fashioned himself a pair of pants and he's got some boots there, but I love the details on this guy. First of all, uh, he's got a cigar hanging out of his mouth, which is hilarious. I love that. Um, but also check this out. I love the way you can pinpoint the different office supplies that completes his outfit. For example, he's got a sheath on his back, which houses the little makeshift arrows that he made out of paper clips to go with his paperclip bow and arrow. So check that out. The bow and arrow looks like it was fashioned out of bending a paperclip with a little rubber band tied in there. This is all plastic. The arrow on this is non-removable, but you can get him to hold this in his hand here. And his fingers are even positioned so that you can squeeze that in there where the arrow looks like it's going through his fingers. And he gets a really solid grip on it. Uh, but let's go back to that sheath there, the, uh, the quiver, rather, for the arrows. The quiver on his back is made to look like the cap from a Sharpie marker. Look how good that looks. That looks just like a cap. You can even see on the underside uh, where the piece is, and it's attached to the rubber band that is wrapped around the figure to hold it up. And then up here on his eye, his eye patch looks like a thumbtack that is stuck in place with a little rubber band holding it in place. Really, really fun design details on here. Everything is crisp and clean and painted well. And again, articulation, very basic, but very sturdy, very solid feeling figure. Uh, the bow and arrow did fall out of his hand a little bit while I was posing him around, but there you go. There we go. Now it's fit in there nice and tight. Really fun looking figure. And if we just go ahead and bring in Colonel Custard, so you can see what these two look like. Our, our warring enemies right here, our two faction leaders, you can see the scale difference between the two with Major Eraser standing just a little bit taller there. All right, jumping back over to our villains. This right here might have ended up being my favorite design of the bunch. This is Commodore Crisps. And as you can see, he's a stack of potato chips, uh, specifically looking like a stack of Pringles chips. Uh, and he is a really, really fun design. Still rocking the green pants and the black boots. And for a weapon, uh, you can see that he has fashioned himself a spear with a stick, a rubber band, and what looks kind of like a little X-Acto 
Nintendo knife blade there, uh, razor blade. Uh, that's fun stuff. So he can hold that in the right gripping hand there so that he's got his spear. Um, so this is the guy that would pal around with our villains, our food-themed villains over here. But we aren't even done with this guy yet. This is what makes this figure so incredibly cool. He has the ability to pop apart not once, but twice to create three unique characters commodore chris splits into three look at this guy so the legs right here you can see there's little hands sculpted on the bottom you can see the original mouth on the front but now we've got these new eyes up here on the top the middle layer right here he's got these little feet nubs in the back he's got a sculpted mouth on the underside with his eyes up here on the top and then we got the top piece here, which stands upright with his little foot nubs there and his very angry toothy mouth right there. How amazing is this? What an incredibly fun action feature. I love this. And he goes back together really well. So if you look at the, uh, the what would be the bottom, the legs here, you could see there's the little uh, holes that the feet plug into. And it's got those little notches in there. And you can see on the bottom of his feet, there are little slots. So when you plug them together, it actually clips together and you can hear it clip. And then on the top, it's the same thing. Over here on the side, you can see the little notches for his feet and he has those same little holes on the underside. So you can clip them together and it clips in place. And now we've got our perfectly formed Commodore Chris says one stack again. This is an incredible play feature. It is absolutely my favorite in the line. And while I love the designs of characters like uh, Colonel Custard over here, um, man, Commodore Crisp is just an incredibly fun toy that absolutely would have worked in the original Food Fighters line or anything like that because that play feature is phenomenal. So that's going to bring us over to the final figure in this first wave, which is Sergeant Scotchy. Uh, as you can see, he's back on the office supplies motif being a roll of tape. It's playing on the Scotch tape brand, which is why he's Sergeant Scotchy. Uh, so he is on our heroic team with Major Eraser over here. He's actually the biggest of the group. Uh, he's got kind of a wider body. He stands the tallest. And uh, he's sort of like the weapons expert of the team, I believe is the way he is described. Um, but he's got a really fun design. He's got a kilt that he's wearing there. But you can kind of see a design that looks very familiar to a Scotch tape label underneath that. You can see his big boots. He's not wearing pants of course because he's wearing a kilt uh, I love the beard I love the goggles and the helmet with like the little uh, light on top of it there and his accessory is super fun as well you can see that he fashioned it out of a double a battery he stuck a thumbtack in the bottom and then he's got like what it looks like probably a paper clip running up through here rubber bands tying more thumbtacks onto the end so he made some sort of an electrical gun utilizing a battery how cool is that so he can grip that in his right hand there which is just a fun looking figure now sergeant scotchy has one more fun feature if you want to do so you can put a real roll of tape inside this guy so i'm going to show you real quick how you have to do that because you have to essentially take the figure apart a little bit so the arms should pop right off of the sockets on the side. One thing I want to tell you guys, my recommendation would be to warm the figure up first before you do this. Uh, maybe do like a hair dryer on a low setting, or of course the warm water trick works as well. Just make sure it's soft enough to pull this off so that there's no breakage, especially if it's been cold outside when you get them delivered. So the arms will pop right off the pegs there on the side, and then the head should pop off the peg in the front, and then you can do the same with the legs down here. You basically have to bring them. Oh, there we go. Yep. Just real careful there. Make sure that you're going to get those legs off that peg without damage. Boom. Just like that. So you can see I pulled all the arms, the legs, and the head off. And that allows you then to remove the kilts. Just got to kind of move it over those pegs. And uh, look at that. Underneath it basically looks like a tape dispenser. A little different because uh, because of the way he's shaped, they actually put like the cutting part on the front up here instead of over here, but still you get the idea. So this will now open up. You can actually pull this apart just like that. And then I've got an actual roll of tape over here. 
I'm going to tear off that end. There's some dust stuck to the end of that there. All right, so we got an actual roll of tape that we're going to bring. I think we're going to want to bring it around this way. You're going to want to, instead of doing it like naturally, like you would want to with tape, because the head's going to go right here, you're going to want to put the tape so that it comes off the front right here where the actual tear tabs are. And then let's just put them all back together. So there we go. Look, now my Sergeant Scotchy's got some actual tape here. <laughs> uh, the beard definitely hangs down. It kind of gets in the way here. He's not practical as an actual tape dispenser. In fact, I'm not even sure these ridges are sharp enough to tear it. I mean, it, yeah, I had to put a little bit of work in there. Now I think I've lost the tape down on the inside, but uh, it's fun. It's something you can do. I will say having the roll in there definitely helps to complete the look. So I don't know. I think it's definitely fun that that was built in as a feature. Certainly not something that needed to be done. <laughs> So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the brand new 925 Warriors toy line, at least the first wave of these. Uh, these are so much fun. I was really excited for these the moment I saw them announced just because they really remind me of those vintage toy lines that I love. And these really feel like an amazing love letter to an era that is bygone. Uh, we just don't get weirdos like this anymore, at least not in stores very often. Uh, in a day and age where everything has to be based on an IP, I love it when we can see some original ideas like this coming from the indie toy makers. And these are an absolute blast with some really fun designs and excellent play features. If you love some of those vintage weirdos like I do, or if these look like they're going to be something you would be interested in, I would definitely recommend picking them up and checking them out. Um, these are actually shipping very soon. In fact, I was told they will be shipping this month, the month that the video is going up. I do want to give a very special thanks to the folks over at 9to5Warriors for sending me along this set a little bit early so we can get a good look at them outside of the packaging. They have been available for pre-order exclusively through BigBadToyStore.com, which is where you can still order them today. I have a set on pre-order there as well. Um, and hopefully, as long as these do well, we'll be getting more waves with more characters to add to this amazing collection. Let me know what you guys think about these down in the comments, and thank you so very much for watching this video. Until next time, my friends.